Hi everyone, today we are going to look at SAML SSO authentication. It's an interesting topic and it's commonly used across all the enterprise architectures. Okay. Before we start that, let's look at a basic authentication in Pega, how that works, just for a moment. So this is my URL where my Pega application is hosted. So I'm hitting this and then I get redirected to a Pega login screen. Then we enter the credentials that is uh, the username and password which is stored in Pega. And then once we click on login, this username and password will get validated against the details which are stored in Pega, right? That's the main point that needs to be noted. And uh, I'm clicking on login with the right credentials. So it takes me to the application, right? So this is a demo of basic authentication. Now we'll take a look at what is custom authentication. It's like, I think already you would have guessed it. So all this authentication, the username password validation is happening in Pega and that these details are stored in Pega. How about offloading Pega from this? How about bringing a third party player which takes care of storing the credentials and uh, validating the credentials? Okay, that's called custom authentication. Now, uh, yeah, before even going to custom authentication, let me show you another, I'll directly jump into the context where I want to show you, uh, like, uh, I have a custom uh, SAML SSO URL, which I have already set up with the configuration. Probably in this post, we look at what is SAML SSO architecture. And in the next post, we'll see how this configuration is done to achieve this. Uh, and then in the further post, I'll talk more about the objectives and the benefits that we're going to get based out of this SAML SSO architecture. Okay. So for now, this is my SAML SSO uh, URL. So once I hit it, this time I'm not going to get redirected to Pega login screen. Instead, I got redirected to a third party URL, which is SAML test.id. Okay. This third party, why I chose this is, this is very easy for beginners. That's the reason I chose this. Yeah. Before even going like, what is this third party login screen? I'll show you a high level architecture of SAML uh, SSO and then we'll come back to the actuals. Okay. And this is a high level uh, block diagram or a sequence diagram that I wanted to give you a picture about that is SAML SSO authentication. And this service provider, before we talk about service provider and identity provider, we'll pick the same example of basic authentication where we made a hit to our Pega URL, which is our Pega environment. And then it has prompted us with a challenge where we entered our credentials. Once validated against Pega, then we got access to the Pega application. Okay. Now here, since we said that we are going to offload the a burden on Pega to store the credentials and to validate the credentials, there should be some other player which should be coming into the picture and sharing that load. All right. So that's where identity provider comes into the picture where identity provider will have uh, good features to store the users. That means to store the users credentials, username and password, and it will have capabilities to validate credentials. Yeah. And much more than that. We'll look at it. So now you know what's the importance of identity provider in the SAML SSO authentication and service provider, whatever Pega environment we have that we are calling for now as service provider. And it has much broader meaning when it comes to Pega, I mean, or else cloud architecture, like let it be Salesforce or Pega or uh, with the latest terminology. But for now to explain this concept, let us uh, for this example, service provider is nothing but a Pega environment. Okay. And identity provider is which is going to store our credentials and which is going to validate our credentials of the user. Okay. That we call it as IDP, identity provider. And to keep it simple, we have taken one example over the web, SAMLtest.id. And credit goes to SAMLtest.id um, author to, for making it so simple because even beginners will be able to use this and they can test out their service providers. Okay. Not going deep into this for now, you can assume that our identity provider is SAML test.id. Yeah. yeah. And now what happens when we hit a SAML SSO URL, right? From the web browser. So when we hit it from the web browser, then you saw that we ultimately got redirected to a different IDP login screen. So from first step, we came to fourth step where it has presented the login screen to us, right? How it has happened. Let's take a closer look. 
user tried to access the resource which is in Pega and that is our service provider. Then service provider identified, oh, from in the URL there is an SSO token which is missing. And why don't you, uh, so, and it's like service provider was suggesting to browser, like why don't you reach to IDP and uh, request for the token, yeah? And then uh, browser makes a request to identity provider. That request is ML request. And how we can see this request, I'm gonna show you in some time. And once the SAML request is received at IDP end, it validates that and it immediately presents the user with the login screen where we saw the username and password which needs to be entered. Okay. Now, once we enter the credentials and submits, now user has entered the credentials and is submitting it, then INT provider will validate the credentials and it generates a SAML response. Before we go deep into this, let's get clarity in the first four steps where we have already done that, but I want to show you where user has tried to access the resource and the redirection happens to IDP via browser and then from browser, we send a SAML request, right? And then presents a login form to user. Now, how the SAML request is sent? Uh, if to trace the SAML request, we have something called SAML tracer in Google Chrome browser. Okay, I'm going to show you that once again. So I'm closing this, probably we can make a hit one more time, but this time before making a hit, we'll keep our SAML tracer ready. So I'm, I have my URL ready and this is a SAML tracer, which is a Chrome plugin I have installed before to this demo. So I'm opening it and now I'm making a hit. And then we get redirected to IDP login screen, which means since we got the challenge already where we need to enter username and password, SAML request would have already gone from browser to IDP, right? That to verify, yeah, and here is our SAML request, right? Now, since we are reaching to SAML request, let's see what this SAML means, okay? Only I have, yeah, so Elma, format this as an XML just to show you and this exactly looks like an XML. I would say this is nothing but an XML itself but which is capturing a different kinds of tabs and which has some significance okay and because of which we would be receiving some benefits out of this SAML architecture okay. So I am saving this as SAML request 1 and once I have the response I would be saving that too but for now I have just request okay and i'll be minimizing this going back to our thing now i enter username and password how can i get username and password now username and password are not stored in pega but they're stored in the identity provider you see saml test.id is providing us the proper username and password which we can use for our demo i'm taking sheldon which is an ex as an example and i would enter the, those details of sheldon here and the same password here so once we enter username and password, since they are valid, so we should be redirected to our Pega application. Like in basic authentication, how the redirection happened to Pega application. Same way, once we click on this, ident provider says that he is a valid user, then he should be redirected to our service provider, which is our Pega application. Now clicking on login, that means, okay, I'll show you the architecture as well. Once I click on this, first to the demo, I see that user got redirected to the appropriate application, SSO demo. How this all happened, we'll talk about it later. But coming to architecture, what has happened behind the scenes? If you look at the architecture, you know till fourth point where you are presented with the login form and then user, as a user, we have entered the credentials and submitted. Then the credentials got validated and a SAML response would be generated from IDP side. Okay, now I'll go to SAML tracer to verify if there is any SAML response as well. We have already seen SAML request. Now I want to see the SAML response, all right? So SAML response would be there here, where you see assertion consumer service. Now you are at SAML and this is the response, okay, which is an XML. And I would take this to a notepad. I would save this like we did for request. request okay now going back we'll, we'll go and inspect into this request and response in 
next post probably but for now you can understand from what this saml request contains is these are the attributes that you're going to get you're getting from the identity provider to you know identity provider as part of the saml response okay and uh, yeah for now let's keep it this simple we'll go back so overall we have seen where saml request is coming into the picture and saml response is generated going back to block diagram once again the sequence diagram so here when web browser is sending a saml request to uh, the identity provider we have inspected the saml request and same way when identity provider validated the credentials against the active directory the saml response got generated and we have verified the saml response from saml tracer okay so these two steps we have already inspected into what details it got into and how it is going to affect our implementation and all that will be something like at low level and we'll look at that in the next post but for now we'll just get to know what are these steps and what are happening behind the scenes yeah so so far we reached till six step just i'll come from the start once again user tried to access the resource then service provider that is a pega environment it understood that sso token is missing so it redirected the user uh, it just instructed service provider instructed the web browser saying that hey the sso token is missing now you have to get it get that from identity provider by making a saml request and then browser made uh, made i mean it's like redirected uh, to identity provider by passing the saml request and then identity provider validates the saml request and presents a login form to user now user has entered the credentials that means we did just some time back and once we submitted then validation of those credentials happened and since they are valid credentials okay saml response got generated and we saw the saml response as well and once that is generated behind the scenes it sends if we have a feed layer or even from the tracer we can see that from the same saml tracer we can see that it sends a it notifies browser saying that hey now you can post the sample response to service provider okay and the service provider how this is happening is uh, through acs if you see this is exact step where we are seeing this assertion consumer service which is nothing but our service provider because if you see this is a pega url right so this is our assertion consumer service url there is exactly this step where it is trying to post the saml response to service provider and then the authenticity of the response how service provider will understand that it is actually coming from the saml response is actually coming from the identity provider because there should be some trust between them right this is where the bigger picture comes how that is in place like how that authenticity will be in place or it can be checked via saml this is where you will understand the importance of saml but assuming that this authenticity is in place in this scenario for this demo uh, so in a happy path so it sets authentication cookie once the user i mean once authentication is valid authenticity is valid and then user will finally get redirected to the re resource which he is requesting so overall in a nutshell user has requested from for some resource which is a pega environment that is a service provider and finally he is getting access to it he is getting access to that resource as an authenticated user in between you have seen that okay service provider has identified that it is it is not having the token it has suggested browser to make a request saml request to the identity provider then identity provider has prompted a login challenge to the user the user has filled in the credentials and submitted to identity provider and then identity provider has generated the saml response by verifying the credentials against the active directory and then it notified browser saying that it has to post that saml response to the service provider assertion consumer service url okay and then that happened yeah what is this acs url and, and all we will discuss it later but just that you can think that it is posting the same saml response it received from idp to this service provider and service provider has a way to check the authenticity of the response that it has received from the right uh, source okay and uh, assuming that the authenticity is already in place and it would be established once the implementation is done in the right manner the in the happy path the authentication cookie will be set and that will be used by the user in accessing it, it basically it's not an extra head it's a redirection which is happening where user will be taken to the 
application that's how when i entered the credentials finally i got redirected to the service provider which is our pega application yeah so this covers the whole uh, sequence of the steps that are involved in saml ss authentication